Does Kiara Hogan deserve to be in the knockouts title picture? Could we see Tessa Blanchard make a return to Impact Wrestling? In case you didn't know, Rohit Raju has made his first defense of the X Division title. Heath says many WWE stars want to join him in Impact Wrestling. I have a segment debuting today called New Talent and a few dumb comments. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. And before I get started, I just want to say on behalf of Shooting Up North and the Impact Lounge, uh, we were all deeply saddened to learn of the passing of the iconic voice of TNA Wrestling, Barry Scott, this week as he passed away at age 65. Uh, Barry Scott, as you know, best known for his voice work in many, many of uh, the TNA and Impact Wrestling video packages. And we at Shooting Up North and the Impact Lounge would like to offer our condolences to the Barry Scott family. Rest in peace, Barry Scott. You will definitely be missed. All right, let's 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 move along. Uh, Kiara Hogan. Kiara Hogan. Does she belong in in the knockouts title picture. I'm gonna say without a doubt, 100%, yes. I feel she should be in the knockouts title picture right now. I think she should be in the spot that Kylie Ray is in right now. Kara Hogan has been with Impact Wrestling since 2017, and she has done some absolutely phenomenal work with Impact Wrestling since 2017. I remember when I first signed her, I was excited because I um, was with a another uh, podcast network, and uh, the owner of that network uh, was very familiar with Kiara Hogan and said that she was going to be a star. And when she signed with Impact Wrestling, I was a little excited, and uh, he was right. Uh, she was she was extremely talented, saw it right from the get go, and. She's put in three years. She's put in three years. I think she's had maybe one title shot. I think it might have even been her first match ever with um, with Impact Wrestling, or one of her first matches. But she hasn't had a, a knockout title shot since, unless I'm sadly mistaken, but I don't think she's had one. <clears throat> and I really think she belongs to be, she belongs in that title picture. And like I said, I think she should be in the spot right now that Kylie Ray is in. I think Kiara Hogan should be the number one contender. Uh, Kylie Ray, you know, recently signed with Impact Wrestling. You could have put her in another feud, a feud with, with somebody else, and let her build up a little bit uh, before she got into that uh, towel picture. But I think Kiara Hogan was should have definitely been before Kylie Ray. I actually picked Kiara Hogan. I wanted Kiara, Ho- Kiara Hogan to win. The gauntlet for the gold match to determine the number one contender for the knockouts title back at Slammiversary. And I feel she should have won that match. But uh, they gave it to Kylie Ray. And no no disrespect to Kylie Ray. She's Kylie Ray is an extremely talented, extremely talented wrestler. But um I, I like I said, Kira Hogan should be in that spot. I mean, you know, Diana Perrazzo, not even signed with Impact Wrestling, comes in and wins wins the the knockouts title, defeats Jordan Grace, and she's still not on the contract, but she holds the title. And it was her first match you know, coming in. They, they, didn't, they didn't build her up or anything like that. They just came in, and they put the title right on her. Again, no disrespect to, to Diona Perrazzo. Very, very talented wrestler. Uh, but you have to think, Kira Hogan, with Impact Wrestling for three years and being passed over time and time again, it's just... You know, here's what I I don't want to happen. I don't want Kara Hogan to get fed up. I don't want Kara Hogan to say, you know what, enough's enough. Um, I, I've had enough here, and she decides that when her contract is up, that she signs elsewhere with with AEW or NXT, and um, she becomes a, a, a star with them. I, I don't want that to happen. And I know there was a there was an interview she did a few weeks ago where she actually indicated that. Uh, she was she was upset at this, but I don't. It was kind of like the interview was kind of like 
her in character. So I don't know if it was a, an actual interview or not, but and I'm not sure how she really feels. But I, I'm worried <laughs> that she might be a little upset that she's being passed over. Again, no, no doubt, no doubt in my mind that Kiara Hogan deserves to be in the knockouts title picture. She's proven herself for three years. She's proven herself for three years. And she's at that spot now where she should be in the knockout title picture. But they decided to go with Kylie Ray. Kylie Ray is number one contender. It it should be it should be Kara Hogan against Diona Perrazzo. At Bound for Glory, that's that's a match that should should take place. And, and next week, you know, they're they're locked in a feud. Kara Hogan, um, of course, you know, aligned herself with Natasha Steeles. And uh, next week, Kara Hogan one on one with with Ty Valkyrie. And I really hope, I really hope Kara Hogan wins that match. I hope she doesn't lose to Ty Valkyrie. I know Tasha Steeles lost, but I hope Kara Hogan pulls out a victory. And I I really hope that after Bound for Glory, whoever the knockouts champion is, the person that's going to be challenging challenging for that title will be Kiara Hogan. Because, I'll say it again, she deserves it. 100%. Okay, let's move along. Let's move on. Tessa Blanchard. Tessa Blanchard. Could Tessa Blanchard come back to Impact Wrestling? Is that a possibility? Let's think about this. Let's think about this. The new reports are coming out that Impact Wrestling released her because they thought that she had a better offer with another company. So that's that's the report that's coming out uh, over the last uh, day or so uh, through numerous websites. Uh, Impact Wrestling released her because they thought that she had a better offer elsewhere. But apparently she hasn't. Apparently she didn't because she's not signed with anybody. She just she just made her first appearance. I think it was Warrior Wrestling uh, yesterday. She dropped the the women's title to actually to Kylie Ray. So she dropped the women's title to Kylie Ray, and uh, her and Kylie Ray um, they had a little uh, they hugged it out at the end of the match. Uh, but um, she hasn't signed. I know the WWE put out some feelers apparently, and AEW whether they contacted her or not they they expressed some interest, but. But let's 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 think about this for a second. Impact Wrestling, thinking that she had an offer in her back pocket, which is why she hasn't she didn't resign with Impact Wrestling. But what if they were wrong? What if it was all? What if it was all a misunderstanding? Right? What if it was all a misunderstanding? Lack of communication between the two, and. Tessa Blanchard never wanted to leave Impact Wrestling in the first place. And Impact Wrestling thinking, you know what? We made a mistake. We made a mistake with with, uh, Tessa Blanchard. Could we see her back? Could we see her back in Impact Wrestling? Now let's think about Daga. Daga is her now her husband. They got married. Congratulations, by the way, to Tessa Blanchard and Daga. Daga has throughout this whole thing has expressed interest in in coming back to Impact Wrestling. Now, if there was a big issue with Tessa Blanchard and Impact Wrestling, I mean, if Tessa Blanchard had absolutely no desire at all to return to Impact Wrestling if through anger because of, of how she was being treated, do you think her husband would want to go back to Impact Wrestling or do you think her husband would be siding with Tessa Blanchard? I, you know, this, this just a thought... He wants to come back. He wanted to come back to Impact Wrestling. Uh, he he's the door still open for him. So, again, what if this whole thing was just a big misunderstanding? And Tessa Blanchard, you know, you would think if there was interest, if she had another offer in her back pocket, um, well, she doesn't have to. She doesn't have to wait thirty days or ninety days or or whatever to sign. And that might even be over by now. Uh, but if there was an offer in her back pocket, don't you think she would have signed it by now? Don't you think if the WWE was interested, that they would have locked her up? Don't you think if if AEW was interested, they would have locked her up already? You know, could we see her back in Impact Wrestling? I think it's likely. I think it's likely. You know, you're gonna think, oh, Lewis, you're nuts, you're crazy. But I think it's likely we could, we could see her back in Impact Wrestling. You know, I could see, you know, Scott, Scott Demore, Don Callis. I don't think they hold grudges. I don't think they hold grudges. I think they want to do what's best for Impact Wrestling, and bringing her back would be a, a tremendous move. And and I'm not saying put the title back on her, 
you know, they did the thing. They they made uh, they made her the first woman ever to hold the Impact Wrestling World Title. That's been done. I don't think they would put the title back on her. I think she would just resume her role in in the knockouts position in the knockouts division. We may see an intergender match uh, here and there. She might come back and challenge Eric Young for the for the um, for the title or whoever the champion is, but but be unsuccessful in, in getting it. In in my opinion, but I think it's it's it's. I think it's likely. I think it's likely. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to reading the comments on, on this uh, because I, I know a lot of people out there think there's no chance in her coming back to Impact Wrestling. But again, it's professional wrestling, never say never. And if, I'm thinking if this whole thing is just a huge misunderstanding between both parties, you know, and they both love working together, I think it could happen. I think it could happen. And... And again, I think if she was going to sign somewhere else, I think she would have done it already. I think she would have done it already. I think the offer would have been out there, and I think she would have signed it already. Or even if the offer was out there, and uh, why wouldn't she? Why hasn't she signed it yet? You know, I. It's likely. It's likely. It's likely she'll be. She she could come back. She could come back to Impact Wrestling. All right, let's let's uh, let's talk about Rohit Raju now for for a little bit. You know, for the last couple of weeks, I've been talking about uh, the X Division Champion uh, Rohit Raju. Not too many people listening right now might know this, or maybe you do. I could be wrong, but um, I'm sure some of you don't know that uh, Rohit Raju has made his first defense of the X Division Championship that he recently won, and he defended it against Crazy Steve. And uh, it wasn't on the main show. It wasn't on the main show. It was tucked away on their B show explosion. I think this is a. I think this is a travesty. I think it's a travesty. Rohit Raju defending his his X Division Championship, making his first defense of the X Division Championship on their B show. That's not even on. TV. I think it's on the Fight Network here. I don't know if it's on TV in in the in the U.S. I, I think it's still on the Fight Network here in Canada, but it's it's on Impact Plus. Uh, so unless unless you watch Explosion, and I'm not sure how many people actually watch Explosion. I don't know what the numbers are there, but uh, you wouldn't have known that that Rohit Raju made his first defense of the X Division title. There's no way, no way in hell that this match should have been put on Explosion, especially his first defense. I can understand if you want to put him on, have him defend his title on Explosion, but his first defense of the X Division title should have been on the main show for everyone to see, for everyone to see. You know, what does that what does that tell you? What do, do, do they have like zero faith in Rohit Raju? You know why? Why put the title on him if if you don't have any faith in him? It's it's just the way they the way they treat Rohit Raju. You know, just from the start. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, but Rohit Raju is 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 an is a star, man. He is an absolute star. I'm a huge fan of Rohit Raju slash Hakeem Zayn, as he's known on the Indies. Man, he could cut a phenomenal promo. He is tremendous in the ring, and he's the X Division champion. But they're not really treating him like the X Division champion. Eh, he showed up. He was. Uh, he showed up on the main show. Uh, he came out during the TJP Chris Bay match, you know, holding the title. But hey, there's no way he should have defended. Made his first defense on the main show, not Explosion. I'm sorry, Impact Wrestling, but that was wrong. That was wrong. Rohit Raju again. Tremendous talent deserves the X Division Championship, but I f- have a feeling he's going to lose it um, at Battle for Glory. Probably to I think it's there's a, a six person match for the X Division title is what's what's being rumored right now. Uh, so I have a feeling he's gonna. I hope he doesn't. I hope he holds the title for a while and he defends it and successfully defends it many many times. But uh, I, I have a bad feeling. I have a bad feeling. No way. Again, no way he should have. That should have been on Explosion. That should have been on the main show. Rohit Raju defending his title against Crazy Steve should have been on the main show. Impact Wrestling. Scott Demore. Don Callis. That's that. That's my feeling on that. And another thing that gets me a little worried is is 
<laughs> is Josh Matthews was back on commentary on on Explosion. No more Don Callis, Matt Striker, who were a tremendous team for two weeks of Explosion. Hopefully, it was just a um, they were just um, doing a uh, a test to see how they would work together, and they worked together fantastic. And uh, hopefully, we will see them debuting at Bound for Glory because Matt Striker, Don Callis were tremendous together. And I really hope we see them debuting at Bound for Glory. All right, Heath. Heath, you know, trying to get a contract, quote-unquote, trying to get a contract with Impact Wrestling. Uh, Claims that many WWE stars want to join him in Impact Wrestling. Uh, This was on the... um, on the internet, uh, numerous websites were reporting on this. Uh, he recently did an interview and said there there are numerous uh, wrestlers in WWE that want to join him in Impact Wrestling, that are just locked into their contracts, who really want to get out. He didn't say any names. He didn't mention it. He didn't mention one name that he would like uh, to see in Impact Wrestling. Curtis Axel, which is um, as we know. Joe Henning, uh, Kurt Henning, Henning's son. Uh, I would love to see Curtis Axel in Impact Wrestling as well. And it could happen. Curtis Axel, not on the contract with the WWE, is able to sign with whoever he'd like. He hasn't signed with anybody yet. But I would love to see him in Impact Wrestling. Uh, but it's just interesting that he says that there are many WWE stars that want to join him in Impact. Um, I'm sure there are many that want to go to AEW. But I'm sure there are a number of wrestlers that would love to come to Impact Wrestling. I'm sure the Good Brothers are now advocates for Impact Impact Wrestling. They're team players. They're they're recruiting for Impact Wrestling. I'm sure they they've spoken to a number of um, WWE wrestlers there. And uh, I, I'm I'm curious. I'm curious to know who it could be. I I I, I couldn't begin to. Uh, speculate on who the names would be but um, I know that WWE it's rumored that there's going to be another round of releases coming next week so let's see we'll see we'll see who um, who will be released I know on on social media a lot of people Impact Wrestling fans want Bobby Roode back in Impact Wrestling I wouldn't mind that but I while you while you're looking at some established um, WWE stars you also want to look at some new talent to mix in with the established stars. I know I reported on uh, two podcasts ago that they have um, some fresh talent coming uh, to Explosion, uh, which is great. So we haven't seen them on Explosion yet. But you want to get some established uh, WWE stars, uh, that's great. But please, you have to, you have to start mixing in uh, some new talent with that as well. Uh, with them as well, I should say. Uh, but it's it's very refreshing to know that, that there are some wrestlers out there that actually want to come to Impact Wrestling, that want to go to Impact Wrestling. Uh, well, whether Heath was telling the truth, I'm sure Heath, you know, I'm, people could say, oh, well, Heath is just uh, just saying that you know, because he's with Impact Wrestling right now. He doesn't like the he doesn't like the WWE, the way he was treated. But I, I think he's telling the truth. I think he's telling the truth. I think we're going to see some releases coming from the WWE and I wouldn't be surprised if a few of them show up uh, at Impact Wrestling. So we'll see what happens this week. I know, it, it, like I said, it's been rumored, it was rumored that there's going to be some more releases coming. Uh, so um, we'll uh, we'll see what happens there. Now, I just want to talk about uh, Rusev, uh, a.k.a. Miro, or I should say Miro, a.k.a. Rusev, uh, signing with AEW. Okay, uh, the Impact Wrestling news here is Impact Wrestling actually offered him a huge, huge contract. Six figures, limited dates, and they wanted to put the Impact Wrestling world title on him. They were going to give him a world title run. So they offered him a tremendous contract. And I just want to say that for the people that are saying that Impact Wrestling does not have any money, there you go. They do have plenty of money. They made a major, major push to get Rusev, aka Miro, or Miro, aka Rusev, or whatever, whatever. Uh, they made a, a huge, huge attempt, huge push to get him into Impact Wrestling, and he chose AEW. That's fine. He could choose wherever he liked to go, but but I don't want to see any more artic- any more, any more articles. I should say, or any more. Social media trolls, Impact Wrestling trolls, saying that Impact Wrestling doesn't have any money. I don't want to see that anymore because it, it's just ludicrous because they have plenty of money. If, if I mean, even with Chris Jericho, they offered Chris Jericho a huge contract to come to Impact Wrestling. They have the money. 
they have the money. I, I kind of wish that uh, that Miro uh, came to Impact Wrestling. I thought it, I thought it, it would have been tremendous to see him in Impact Wrestling. I thought that would have been a destination that he would have come to. I thought the Good Brothers might have um, you know swayed him into uh, convince him to sign with Impact Wrestling, but uh, he decided to go with AEW. That's fine. Uh, and uh, I was going to talk about the the storyline for a second in AEW, but I'm not even going to I'm not even going to go into it because it doesn't uh, I don't get it. But uh, but if you watch AEW, you'll you'll understand what I what I'm talking about. But anyway, all right. So Rich Swan, Rich Swan has returned to Impact Wrestling, and well, let's let's talk about Eric Young. Let's talk about Eric Young uh, for a second. Eric Young cut a promo. Alicia Edwards came out, um, got in his face. Eric Young attempted the pile driver, and uh, Tommy Dreamer came out and made the save. Yeah. Um, okay. Here's 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 my thing with that. You know, love Eric Young. I love Eric Young. Glad he's got the title. Well deserving of the of the Impact Wrestling World Title. I think they need to stop uh, <laughs> stop with the Tommy Dreamer. Stop. To, I I kind of wish somebody else came out. I kind of wish somebody else came out, not Tommy Dreamer. No, I know, I know, BQ and TW they they spoke about it on the show, as well. Uh, the cool factor, um, they uh, kind of I, they kind of agree with me on that. Uh, Tommy Dreamer always coming out, but I know BQ had mentioned that uh, Tommy Dream, Tommy Dreamer, you know, the um, ratings go up whenever Tommy Dreamer comes out. So I guess that's one of the reasons why they're using him. But I think it's here, here's what I would have done. Here's what I if I was if I was booking it, that's what I would have done. I would have I would have let Eric Young pile drive Alicia Edwards. I would have added to his his psychotic persona. I would have let him pile drive Alicia Edwards. And then the following week, what I would have done is I would have brought out I would have if if he was willing to do it, I would have brought out Davy Richards. I would have brought Eddie Edwards' old partner Davy Richards out. Or or if 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 you didn't want to see Alicia Edwards get pile drive, instead of Tommy Dreamer coming out, I would I would have had Davy Richards come out to make the save. Dave, Dave Richards making his return, and then I would have had Eric uh, Eric Young take out Davy Richards. I would have had Davy Richards challenge him to a match, you know, not for the title, um, and they have a match, and Eric Young against Davy Richards. Uh, it would have been it would have been I would think that would have been great, and have Eric Young. Attempt to injure Davy Richards and then have Rich Swan come out and, and make the save. I would have done that. I think that would have added a lot more to it than having Tommy Dreamer coming out uh, to, to make the save. And then, of course, you know, we got the hardcore match and whatever. It just, you know, you know <laughs> like, like I, I think TW said, TW said that there's no, there's no way, TW on the, the cool factor, uh, there was no way that anybody thinks that Tommy Dreamer is going to win the Impact Wrestling World title. And um, I, the, I, for one, didn't think that was going to happen. I, I even think it was a non-title match. Uh, but even if it was a title match, you know, I'm not sitting there thinking, oh, Tommy Dreamer might walk away with the Impact title. There's no way he's going to win the win the title. So the, the, somebody else should have been in that spot, not Tommy Dreamer. I, I would have, like I said, Davey Richards coming out, it would have... Um, that would have made a whole lot of sense, a whole lot of sense for David Richards coming out, even if it was just a one-off appearance, uh, and they have, or even if they didn't have a match and Eric Young just attacks David Richards, you know, David Richards challenges him to a match and and uh, Eric Young just attacks him from behind and, and takes out his leg and and uh, goes to injure David Richards and and Rich Swan comes out and makes the save. I think that would have worked a lot better. Personally, uh, if if they let him pile drive Alicia Edwards, I think that would have been fantastic. Um, not not that I have anything against Alicia Edwards. When I say fantastic, it would have been it would have like I said it would have added to his his psychotic persona, and I think uh, I think it will work that way. But uh, anyway, we got Tommy Richards, and I'm um, sorry, we got uh, Tommy Dreamer, and um, Eric Young. Uh, Won the match, of course, and tried to injure uh, Tommy Dreamer. And Rich Swan makes his return to Impact Wrestling, which which was expected. Uh, a lot of people on social media are, are like, "Oh, I thought he retired." Well, what is this? What's going on? He didn't retire. It was a storyline. You know, I, I went over this 
a few weeks back. It was just a storyline, and uh, he's back. I don't even think his leg is injured, to be honest. And uh, I'm sure at Bound for Glory, it's going to be uh, Rich Swan against Eric Young for the Impact Wrestling World Championship. And I know next week, Rich Swan is going to uh, be in the ring speaking with Scott Demore. I think he's going to be... I don't know, he's got something to say. So, ne- so next week, uh, Rich Swan. I saw the, the the highlights for the upcoming week. So Rich Swan in the ring with Scott Demore, and I think Eric Young comes out and um, interferes. So it'll be interesting. Interesting to see what happens. Interesting to see what happens uh, next week with uh, Eric Young and Rich Swan. Now, I, I spoke a little earlier about new talents. So this is a new segment that um, I'm going to start this week. I don't know if I'm going to do it every week, but uh, it's a a segment called New Talent. (laughs) Plain and simple, New Talent. And it's just going to be talent that I think Impact Wrestling should give a shot to or at least take a look at. And the first guy I'm going to talk about, I'm not not, not going to be a lengthy segment, Uh, just the first guy that I think Impact Wrestling uh, should look at the first the first person on this segment that I think Impact Wrestling should take a look at. Guy that works in the Maritimes, been doing it for many years. His name is Kovi Christ. Kovi Christ is an absolutely tremendous performer. He cuts an absolutely fantastic promo. In the ring, he is just just brilliant in the ring. So damn talented. If you have a chance. Check out Kobe Christ. He was he was just before the pandemic hit. He was on a a tour of England and he absolutely killed it out there. Or should I say uh, the UK? He, he absolutely killed it out there in the UK. And uh, he started his own promotion in the Maritimes called Kaizen Pro Wrestling. Uh, he started it with uh, three other uh, individuals, and he is just fantastic. He's training wrestlers now, and if anyone deserves a shot to be looked at by Impact Wrestling, it's definitely. Kovi Christ. And now it's time for dumb comments. Okay, so this week, it, it's it's interesting this week because I've been seeing, you know, let's let's start with the with the slightly dumb. Well, slightly. They're all, they're all dumb comments. They're all dumb comments. Uh, I've noticed I noticed uh, there was a um, a post by Impact Re- Impact Wrestling with uh, Kiara Hogan and Tasha Steeles. And it was on Facebook, and Kara Hogan has the blue hair, and suddenly everybody thinks, "Oh, uh, she's trying to be Sasha Banks." And there's a lot of, "Is that Sasha Banks?" You know, comments on there, and I, I could, I could understand it because you know, Sasha Banks is the first person in the history of 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 Earth <laughs> to ever have blue hair. She's the first person ever to have blue hair. Actually, I think, I, I don't know, I couldn't prove it, but I, I think Kara Hogan actually had the blue hair before before Sasha. I don't I don't watch WWE. I, I, I've seen clips, but I, I don't know when Sasha Banks actually started with the blue hair. Uh, but just because two people have blue hair doesn't mean they're the same person. You know, it's, it's, it's a stupid comment. It's dumb. You know, Kara Hogan is Kara Hogan, Sasha Banks is Sasha Banks, and that's the end of that. And that's the end of that. Just like, just like uh, Eric Young, uh, there was a Eric Young, um, Eric Young post uh, with Alicia Edwards, and somebody had the audacity to post who, you know, referring to Eric Young. They were, they were uh, 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 an Impact Wrestling troll who bird um, appeared. On an on an Eric Young post, if, if dude, if you don't know who Eric Young is, if you don't know who Eric Young is, what the hell are you doing, a professional wrestling fan? I bet I bet when Eric Young was in Sanity and NXT, you were just like you know, you know, jumping head over heels for 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 every Eric Young appearance. But now he's in Impact Wrestling. It's who who's that? Who is that? Stop being stop being stupid. They stop being either either you're being a stupid stupid troll, or you have no idea about anything in professional wrestling. For someone who's been in, in professional wrestling for twenty years, like like Eric twenty or so years for for like Eric Young, and you don't know who that person is. Come on, man, stop being stupid. 
stop being stupid. It's just just plain stupidity, man. So and it irritates me, man. It ir- irritates me. All right, let's let's go to some really dumb comments. Let's go to some really. I just I just want to get those those two off my chest. And now let's go to some really, really dumb comments. Um, it was a motor motor city machine guns uh, post. Somebody writes, uh, they need to go somewhere better. Love the Motor City Machine Guns, but Impact is a lost <laughs> is a lost cause nowadays. <sighs> yeah, Impact Wrestling is a lost cause nowadays. I, I love how they 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 make they make a claim, but they don't they don't back it up with anything. Now, how how the hell is Impact Wrestling a lost cause? How is it a lost cause? Impact Wrestling again, one of the very few, one of the th- three promotion, one of three promotions that continued to to put shows on through this pandemic to to entertain its fans, to keep its fans entertained, and and you're calling it a lost cause. You're calling it a lost cause. It's not a lost cause. Impact Wrestling is tremendous, and. These are people who aren't even watching Impact Wrestling. That, that's what gets me. I mean, I I was sent a, a comment uh, from from somebody uh, from my from my friend Pat, and uh, he sh- showed that somebody was 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 knocking Impact Wrestling, and they indicated in as they're knocking it that they don't watch Impact Wrestling, but they know it's not good. How, how could you say something like that? It's Impact Wrestling is putting on. Absolutely fantastic shows these days. The talent they have right now is just absolutely wonderful, and um, I'm hoping they get back in front of a crowd soon because uh, I think the crowds are really going to grow and grow and grow with with talent they're getting. But it's it's not a lost cause. It's 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 frustrating when I see this. It's frustrating when I when I when I read this stuff uh, because these impact wrestling trolls have absolutely no idea. What they're talking about? Absolutely no idea what they're talking about. Case in point. Case in point. Another another person uh, was saying uh, was talking about on how bad Impact Wrestling is these days uh, because and and his his reasoning was because they lost all the major stars like like AJ Styles <laughs> and uh, Bubba Ray and uh, Bobby Roode and. Um, who else did he mention? Uh, I think he might have mentioned Samoa Joe, and and he said they they lost all their top stars. I, I laughed when I said AJ Styles because AJ Styles has been gone for so, these guys have been gone for so long, you know, and they 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 brought new talent in, they brought new talent in, and and for for you to say well, well how come okay you know what I I don't watch WWE anymore because uh, they lost Hulk Hogan, okay. There, there, there. Because, because, because Hulk Hogan and Ricky the Dragon Steve and Ricky the Dragon Steve Boat left the WWE. I, I don't watch the WWE anymore. That, that's my reasoning. That's my reasoning why I don't watch the WWE anymore. You know, they, 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 they lost the top stars. They lost Hogan. They lost um, Ricky the Dragon Steve Boat. Uh, Rick Flair left. Um, who else? Who else left? Um, you know, Razor Ramon is gone. So I, I can't watch the WWE anymore because, because they lost all the top stars. See how stupid that sounds? <laughs> See how dumb that sounds? And uh, it's just, it is. It's it's dumb. And here's my favorite. Here's my favorite one. Um, let me let me find it here on my phone because I, I took a picture of it because it's 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 actually hilarious. All right, here it is. Uh, some guy some guy named Chad. I'm gonna say his first name. Some guy named Chad. He writes, um, "Well, guys, I'm officially done with Impact." I guess if it if it catches my attention, I'll start watching again. And and the, the funny thing is, is he actually he took a picture of his TV, and as he was about to cancel the, the DVR recording of of Impact Wrestling, so he took a picture of of the screen where it says cancel series, and he's got the the cancel series highlighted, and he took a picture of it right right before he actually canceled uh, the the DVR recording of. Um, of Impact Wrestling, so he's not going to be recording Impact Wrestling anymore. And I don't know about you guys. I don't know about you guys listening, but I, I don't. I don't know how Impact Wrestling is going to bounce back from this. I don't know how they're going to bounce back from this. I mean, they lost Chad. 
<laughs> Chad is is no longer uh, recording Impact Wrestling, so you know, um, you know this this could be the final nail in the coffin for Impact Wrestling. You know, I don't know, I don't. I'm sure Scott Tamora and Don Callis. I'm sure they all they they got together and they they called a uh, a team meeting on this, and um, they they discussed on on how they how they could make things better for Chad, how they could get Chad to start recording Impact Wrestling again. Yeah, I'm sure that's that's the <laughs> that's the top priority right now at at, at Anthem. I mean, I'm I'm sure they uh <laughs> an emergency an emergency company meeting has been called, you know, and then they all got together in a in a secret in a secret location in a secret location to 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 discuss on on how things how they they can improve things. <laughs> How they can improve things for Chad, because Chad is officially done with them. You know, I'm sure they're going to talk about. You know, we maybe you know, I think you know they they that huge contract offer for to to uh, to Rusev. I think was an attempt to uh, to get to get Chad back. You know, they wanted to, they desperately wanted to get Rusev so Chad would 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 consider coming back to to watching <laughs> Impact Impact Wrestling. <laughs> Okay, uh, Chad, you, know, you don't want to watch Impact Wrestling anymore. That's your prerogative, but nobody cares, really. <laughs> nobody cares, Chad. On that note, I'm going to say thank you very much for listening today. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin, and until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.